In what world is Brendan Fraser better at something than Tom Cruise? Apparently this world. Welcome to Prodigium, Mr. Morton. From the latter, Monstrum Vel Prodigium. A warning of monsters. Forgive the state of things, we had very little time to prepare for our guest, and only the information Jennifer provided to go on. In truth, she works for us. It's not an exact science, this business. And the business being evil. Mr. Morton, recognize, contain, examine, destroy. She is by far the most ancient we've ever encountered. The Mummy is back. I guess that's what mummies do. They come back. 1999, 18 years ago, the first Mummy came out, starring Brendan Fraser. Now Tom Cruise bringing it back in starting off Universal's Dark Universe series. Is this a series that's going to live after this resurrection? Let's find out with five things you might want to know about The Mummy. To tell you the truth, I actually really like this idea of what Universal is trying to do here. Here's the unfortunate part. I didn't really like this movie. Uh, and there's lots of reasons. Let's start with the good stuff, and then I'll kind of break down the reasons I don't think this movie works. Uh, when I say the good stuff, it's primarily this. Some of these action scenes are really incredible. When those big action set pieces are happening... Tom Cruise is in his element. There is yet another Tom Cruise on a plane scene that happens in this movie that is kind of mind-blowing. And during those moments, I'm like, yes, I'm enjoying watching this. But if there's not a lot beyond that, you're not going to keep me for the whole movie. But during those moments, you've got me. The other thing I kind of liked about this movie, although we'll give it a yellow because there's good and bad to it, is I like the Dark Universe idea. I really do. When the Dark Universe logo uh, came on screen at the beginning, I was like, cool. I love it when studios think big, they think long-term, they think about something that's going to be entertaining and compelling for several years down the road. I like this new idea of expanded universes. However, this movie doesn't do the right thing in serving setting up this universe. You think of movies like Iron Man setting up the Marvel Universe. It was a great movie, first and foremost. It didn't show all of its cards right from the beginning. Then you think of uh, DC setting up their universe, doing it wrong, trying to show all their cards right at the beginning. This is somewhere in the middle, but there's too much going on here with setting up a new character that Russell Crowe plays that I'm not going to give away that is obviously going to be a part of this huge universe with setting up Tom Cruise's character to make a transition towards the end of the movie that makes him a bigger part of this universe. The seams are just showing in their big construction. I want to see this picture first and then back me off and let me see the mosaic. And as it is, this picture just isn't that good. So let's talk about why this movie doesn't work. Uh, and surprisingly enough, I think Tom Cruise has a lot to do with it. I love Tom Cruise. I'm a Tom Cruise apologist. I love almost everything he's in. But this movie doesn't fit him. I think he's miscast here. He has an earnestness to him where everything seems just seriously done that doesn't work with this kind of silly, quirky movie. And so when you set silly side characters around him in silly, quirky one-liners that are happening, things that I can enjoy in a movie that is that tone, they're just they're not working with his style of acting. Either make the movie match his tone, since he's the star, and make the movie a little more earnest, or cast somebody else. Uh, Jake Johnson is in this, one of my favorite actors, and he doesn't work here either because his tone is in the other movie. So you've got Tom Cru Cruise being earnest, Jake Johnson being goofy and one-linery, and they just don't work together. Maybe make Jake Johnson the star. How about that? That could have been a little more interesting. Or somebody like Nathan Fillion or, you know, somebody who can deliver a little bit of the quirk without sounding so serious about it. As it is, I think there's a tone disparity here that really makes the movie struggle overall. <laughs> But that's really surface level stuff of, of what's wrong here. There's some deeper stuff here, deeper issues with the film. Uh, one has to do with the characters. They're kind of boring. And that makes the movie overall boring because you don't really care about what the characters are thinking about and caring about and what they want. Tom Cruise seems very vanilla in this. Uh, he, the, the female lead also 
seems like what what is it that defines her what am i supposed to care about in her character development what is she after what does she want jake johnson's character is just you know a sidekick who tells jokes and just down the line even the villains are kind of boring they're just evil and also the movie does something really strange with the evilness of this world at the end that i'm not going to give away that completely negates any emotion i would have put into the evilness in this world uh it's it's a very strange movie in that regard, and I just don't care enough about any of these people to really care enough about the movie. But here's the main thing about this movie. I think it's its fatal flaw. It tries to explain everything too much. So much voiceover. So many explaining the myths and who the people are. As soon as something happens on screen, a character is obliged to literally say what just happened on screen so that the audience doesn't miss anything. We have narration at the top that explains the background of everything for the first several minutes. And then it gets explained again in the middle of the movie. And I think it's shortly explained again at the end of the movie. Like, how many times do you need to tell us before you trust us that we understand what's going on here? And here's an idea. How about you just shoot the movie, show us the visuals, and let us experience it and understand it as an audience without you having to lead us along and spoon feed us the entire way? It's really annoying. I noticed it early on, and it happens all the way throughout. This movie does not trust its audience. <clears throat> Overall, I feel like The Mummy could have been a really cool thing. And I like Tom Cruise usually, but none of it works here other than possibly the big action set pieces. I give it a C minus. Thanks for checking out this Your Movie Friend review. We'll be to the best ever challenge here in a bit. Before we get there, though, if you'd like to hang out more, uh, hit me up on Twitter, Aaron Dicer, A-A-R-O-N-D-I-C-E-R. -E Having a lot of fun there these days. Every sa Sunday afternoon, uh, people are throwing out categories and I give my top five. And I'm really enjoying that for about an hour to an hour and a half every Sunday afternoon. So, yeah, hit me up on Twitter, Aaron Dicer, a a r o n. D-I-C-E-R. And if you like podcasts, wherever you do your podcasts, go ahead and search for Sift Pop, S-I-F-T-P-O-P. -P. It is our weekly pop culture podcast. We're having a blast doing that as well. And of course, please subscribe, comment, all that here on YouTube helps the channel out uh, quite a bit. Speaking of helping the channel out, thank you so much to those who are supporting it financially. That's huge. To think that you would actually click over there to Patreon Give $3 uh, or more every month so that uh, this channel can keep happening. That means the world to me. If you'd be interested in doing that, there are some fun perks as well, including seeing uh, videos early, that kind of stuff. Uh, you can check that out at patreon.com slash your movie friend. Patreon.com slash your movie friend. And thank you so much for your support. All right, on to the best ever challenge where you name the best movie ever in a particular category. Also try to identify what my choice is. And let's do best non-Indiana Jones archaeology movie. I was just going to do best archaeology movie, and then I just figured everybody would say one of the Indiana Jones movies. Probably especially the fourth one, right? Uh, so we're going to do non-Indie archaeology movies. And the clue for mine is it would absolutely revolutionize the way we travel. Especially if we wanted to go to another galaxy. But man, I would love to be able to travel this way. Take a guess at mine. That's pretty obscure. I wonder if you can find a second one that works with that clue other than the one I'm thinking of. Uh, you can take a guess at mine in the comments. Leave your choice there as well. As always, going to give you a few extra seconds here to hit subscribe. You'll see my big face pop up in the middle of the screen, black and white. Click my face. Click my new out. Click my face. You like it? I don't think I like it.